Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Today's episode is a very interesting topic and it's a very, very, very big topic. This is a topic that involves culture, that involves religion, but it also involves a lot of mental health. So this is a topic that I think we've all heard about, we all hear about, and we all will continue to hear about because this is a topic that honestly, I don't think it's ever ending. Today, I'm going to be answering one of the very, very big questions that a lot of people have, which is, can you have Iman in your heart and still be depressed? Now, this may sound like a simple question, but when you look into what people say about it, there's a very, very big range of opinions. Some people say that if you're sad, it's the consequences of your own sins and you shouldn't be depressed if you truthfully have faith in God. I've actually heard that before. And if you want me to be quite honest with you, I 1000% disagree. In this episode, I'm going to explain to you why it is okay and it is normal for you to have Iman in your heart and still feel sad and still feel depressed. Not only am I going to explain it through my own reasoning, through own experiences, I'm also going to share with you Islamic points of views and inshallah we can all learn something. The one thing that I've been able to learn in my time period of having this podcast and talking to so many different people, alhamdulillah, and hearing your guys' story, is that what someone needs sometimes is nothing but someone to hear. Sometimes people have bottled up things so much that they just need to talk about it. After they talk about it is when I start to give them Islamic advice. I start to try, in my capability, whatever I can do the best that I can, I provide, I provide them with sources, we get onto that. A lot of times when people are depressed, one of the questions I ask them is, do you pray? So Alhamdulillah, because of you guys, I've been able to hear lots of different stories. You guys have shared why you got depressed, how it happened. You guys have told me a bunch of different things. And the one thing that I've learned throughout this time frame is that sometimes all you need to do is be a listener. We have two ears for a reason and one mouth. When people are going through a hard time and they share their problems with us, One problem that I've noticed among the community is that people instantly jump and say, don't bring your toxic energy near me. I don't know the solution to your problem. You're trauma dumping. You're this, you're that. Listen to me. Listen. Just because you don't know the solution doesn't mean that you can't offer a dua or be a listener. I stand by that. I've had people share their stories with me and their stories, honestly, I'm going to be brutally honest, they made my whole day feel weird. Like my vibes were just go off. And I'm just like, bro, like that is crazy. Like what is happening? And I still have those stories that live on my mind rent free. But one thing that I need to remember, that I remind myself nearly every day is that Allah is in control. I can't change what's happening to them, but I can make dua for them. So one thing that I want to tell you guys is if you are trying to do dawah, you're trying to help someone, trying to spread the word of the deen, sometimes all someone needs is someone to listen. So please just listen and then offer Islamic advice if you can. Getting back to the point, one big litmus test that we do upon everyone is, do you pray? We ask them, do you pray? And if they say no, we instantly say, that's why you're depressed. And I'm going to be honest with you. If you don't pray and you are sad, one of the reasons you are sad is because you don't pray. And you're not realizing that. If you're undermining the power of prayer, you're never going to be happy. That's my truth and I'm not going to step against that. Allah says in the Quran in verse 153, O you who believe, seek help in patience and prayer. Truly God is with the patient. Now my question to you is, do you think that God is a liar? Astaghfirullah, no you don't. So if Allah is literally saying here, seek help in patience and prayer. So have patience through whatever you're going through and pray. Pray with your whole heart. Pray with everything that there is out there. Pray. Inshallah, God will help you. God is with the patient. God's not going to say something that he's not. Never. Our God is not a liar. Astaghfirullah, you know that. Now, the reason why I brought this up is because if you're not praying or you're not consistent with your prayers and you feel depressed and sad and you have a heavy heart and you don't know why, I hate to say this, but you probably should be praying a lot more frequently if you really want to become happier. Now, I'm not undermining the people that do pray and are still sad. And this is what this EP is about. The people that pray and they still feel sad. So I'm going to get into that. But for the people that don't pray and they're depressed, 
you can run around in circles and chase this world and chase your desires, but you'll realize that your desires don't make you happy. You're going to need to seek help through patience and prayer. God is the one that controls your situation. If you're not even taking the time five minutes out of your day to pray, why should God change your situation? I understand some people, they're way too depressed to get up to pray. They don't have the energy, but you need to realize that if you truly want to get out of what you are in, you are going to have to get up to pray. You're going to have to turn back to God. I talk about this a lot. If you're really interested in a really big discussion about this, go on my page. You can find a bunch of episodes on that. But this episode, I want to specifically dedicate to the people that pray, that do sunnah fasting, that make dua, that do Quran reflections, that do so many things to gain knowledge, that are students of knowledge, yet they're still depressed. So I also want to keep in mind one thing before I get into my examples, that depression you know not having the energy to do anything like literal serious depression and then having sad days and you know feeling down they're two different things i know a lot of us when you have faith in god you know it's it's still normal to have sad days you may not be completely depressed but it's normal for you to have days where you're just not feeling it so what i'm going to share with you is a few examples right now to make you realize that the way that you feel is 100 okay and it's normal getting straight to the point prophet adam alayhi salam he was the first prophet when he got thrown down from heaven and Allah taught him the words of repentance. He had to repent to God. His two sons got in arguments. His two, one of the son killed another one. How do you think, how do you think that played out in his heart? It probably wasn't easy. Now we cannot judge the prophets. We can't make assumptions on how they felt, right? But they had high iman. But clearly Allah has mentioned their story in the book. So we can resonate with it. Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. Think about how many people always had something to say to him. That why is he planting trees? Why is he doing this? Why is he making a boat? He always had to hear it from somebody, right? Like all of our prophets, peace be upon all of them, they always had to hear it from people. Created a big boat. He put the animals on the boat. And when the time came, he survived. He got out, right? So he kept faith in Allah. We can see the same thing happening in prophethood, prophet Saleh, prophet Ibrahim. All of these people... They went through long torments of literally people being so cruel towards them. Prophet Ibrahim's family was literally the ones that made idols. You realize that? And he was a little kid. He was a little kid. He was a very smart child, but they used to worship the sun. His family worshipped the sun. His dad made idols. He used to look at the moons and the suns and was like... How could this be God? How can God be gone? How can God be a star? God can't set. Like he questioned these things and he was so young. And when God chose him to be a prophet, when he told his father, his father blew up. Like, how can you do this? We worship idols. I make idols. This His dad made idols. And now this his son is coming up to him telling him, oh, hey, I'm a prophet. I worship Allah. I don't believe in what you believe in. Imagine how that goes. And one of the most biggest stories that we constantly hear about in his time was when there was the big celebration. He went inside the temple. He broke all the idols and he left the axe with the biggest idol. And he told them, if your idols are gods, tell them to say who broke it. Everyone in the community was so pissed off because they knew these idols can't speak. Then eventually they tied him up in chains and they said to punish him. They decided to burn him in the fire. Imagine how he felt in that moment. And obviously, the most biggest and well-known example is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You know, he had to bury his own kids. He had so many kids that died. Only a few made it out. His own wife, Hathija, may Allah be pleased with her, died. When he lost her, like, imagine the things that went through him. He lost his uncle, who was his only protector in that entire city. Then after that, you know, the enemies, they came at him. And we also know that Surah ad duha I know a lot of you guys have heard of that Surah. It's a great surah when you're feeling depressed. You read it, it makes you feel better, yes. But did you guys know that this chapter was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he was so sad because he didn't get any revelation for like nearly six months. Not even in a form of a dream. He was so disturbed. His state of mind was everywhere. He felt so negative. He thought that Allah was displeased with him or that Allah had forgotten him. And he didn't, like he felt so many bad ways. But think about it. Then Allah sent down this whole surah telling the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Most literally in the surah, how Allah has not forgotten him. 
I'm going to read you the first few eyes of the surah where it starts off by saying, By the morning sunlight and the night when it falls still, your Lord, O Prophet, has not abandoned you, nor has he become hateful of you. And the next life is certainly far better for you than this one. And surely your Lord will give you so much that you will be pleased. Did he not find you as an orphan and sheltered you? Did he not find you unguided then guided you? And did he not find you needy then satisfied your needs? So do not oppress the orphan, nor repulse the beggar, and proclaim the blessings of your Lord. You see that? Like, he, God literally tells him, don't lose hope. I'm here and I haven't forgotten you. And the point here is this. If you're stating that if you have Iman, you won't be depressed, then, in my opinion, argue with the wall because the prophets, peace be upon all of them, which were so valuable to Allah, clearly live against your statement. They were depressed. They went through hard times. They went through very, very difficult moments. There are stories are for us to read and reflect on and realize that, hey, it's bad for us, but it ain't as bad as it was for them. Like, they got it way bad than we do. Way bad. They're losing their children. Their wives are dying. They have to leave cities and leave people they love. Things are getting abandoned, destroyed, flooded. Like, it's it's so much. They're going to jail. There's so many things that have happened to all of these prophets, peace be upon all of them, that we wouldn't even be able to live. This is exactly why Allah says in a beautiful hadith, the hadith was narrated by Abu Huraira who reported by the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, who said that if Allah was good for someone, he afflicts them with trials. And clearly we can see the prophets were afflicted with lots of trials. And clearly Allah loves them. We read about them even today. Now whenever this is brought up, people instantly say, okay, Allah loves me, I love him, but I hate getting tested. Because it feels like everything is falling upon me. How am I supposed to get out of this? When do you know it gets better? Well, besides the fact that Allah says in the Quran that indeed with hardship there's ease, 100%, we know there's hardship with ease. But also remember that there's a beautiful hadith that talks about mercy and never being deprived by your Lord. This was a beautiful hadith and I love this one. It's reported by Abu Razin, the messenger of Allah, peace be blessings upon him, who said that Allah laughs at the despair of his servant for he will soon relieve him. I said, O messenger of Allah, does the Lord laugh? The prophet said, yes, I said, we will never be deprived of a goodness by a Lord who laughs. Think about that. Allah literally sees you in hardship and you're sitting there panicking. You're like, oh my God, like I'm going to die. I can't do this anymore. You know, it's the old and be all. But God knows you can do it. That's why God put you in it. Why would God put you in something that he knows you can't do? He's not. He said he's not going to test you more than your capacity. So if you are believing that you are being tested more than your capacity, you are not believing in the promise of God. God has said that he's not going to test you more than his capacity. Put a period at the end of that statement and let it go. I always told everyone, I was like, God is testing me way more than I can handle. I'm telling you who he is. Like, I don't know what he thinks. I don't know why he thinks that I can handle this, but I can't handle this. But now look at me today. Alhamdulillah, I've made it out, right? And I, I'm so grateful for those things. So grateful. Because if I was never pushed beyond my capacity, I would have never been able to be here today. So Allah sees you while you are depressed, while you are sad, while you're going through hardship, knowing that he's going to come and help you. And you need to believe that he's going to come and help you. You know, the next thing people instantly say is, how am I supposed to believe in Allah's hope and mercy when I'm this disappointed and this broken and this depressed? I think there's no hadith that hits home like this one, which states that the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said that Allah has 100 mercies, out of which he has sent down only one for jinn, mankind, animals, and insects, through which they love one another and have compassion for one another. And through it, wild animals care for their young. Allah has retained 99 mercies to deal kindly with his slaves on the day of resurrection. I think that this is alone beautiful, because think about your life, the way that you live, humankind mankind the entire earth the beautiful scenery the places to see the places to travel your existence the ability to walk just everything amazing that you see on this earth is just one part of his mercy let that sit in one so the rest 99 are for all of us on the day of judgment and if his one mercy is running this earth and is giving so many of us hope and is so many of us the reason to live Imagine how it will be on the day of judgment. Now, of course, we should fear Allah. We shouldn't just take advantage of his mercy. But his mercy is going to be there for those that truly strive, you know. So let this hadith be your sign that Allah's mercy is there. God is never far. And if you ever feel like you and God, the relationship has separated, then just know that it's not God that left. It was you. Every single time, without a shadow of a doubt, it is you that took a step back or reversed, or went back to your old ways, because God is at one, 
He's infinite. He He's forever powerful. He doesn't make mistakes. We make mistakes. So if you feel like there's a veil between you and God, it is probably a veil that you have put. Repent for your sins, try to become a better Muslim, and get up and try again. The one thing that I feel like really cures depression is seeking knowledge. And I talk about this in every episode. Because the thing about seeking knowledge is that when you... 100% invest yourself in trying to understand the deen and trying to understand the hadiths, the Quran, the tafsir, whatever, you will start to believe in Allah's mercy and you will start to believe in things being okay a lot more. If you're looking for one set formula to really be your distraction through your hard times, through your low iman and through your depression, it has got to be find one niche of knowledge and grow in it. The way that I started out was... Actually, it was I was watching kid videos. I mentioned this in my story. I watched this channel that uploaded like um, profit videos for kids and it was animated. It was cute. That was my one niche that I started out with. And I used to take notes on those videos and I learned so much about multiple profits through that. Alhamdulillah. And I recommend that channel to everyone in my discord and whatever. So if you're interested, DM me and I'll forward it to you. But I start off from there. That one channel. I watched it, I took notes on it, and it became so interesting. I was like, wow, the prophets went through this and they made it out. Of course, I can make it out. Peace be upon all them, by the way. And then what happened was I started to go online and search up their stories and read books. And then slowly but surely, it grows. So maybe if you're a person that's really, really detached from the Quran and you've never read the English translation of the Quran, I recommend getting an English translation, sitting down, reading it, taking notes, maybe adding a little bit of post-its, Writing down what you can take away from every verse. It is the small actions, the small consistencies that make you grow into becoming a better person. If you think that every single religious person that you see just became like that overnight, you are completely wrong. People come to me and they're like, oh, mashallah, you're so knowledgeable. Can I be honest with you? I don't even think that I'm not that knowledgeable. I don't. And inshallah, Allah blesses me with more knowledge. And inshallah, he blesses all of you with more knowledge because there's always something to learn when it comes to Islam, right? all starts off with one area one if you are confused and you don't know where you should start dm me i'll talk about it with you and we will figure out what interests you and where you can start you need to find your cure of depression your cure of all of these things in the quran and i promise you you will i promise i once posted this quote on my instagram and it said that the quran is the is a book that when you open it and you truly have the intention and you know you want to become better and you want to heal you're gonna find your story somehow in it and i a thousand percent agree when people used to say that i was like how how am i gonna find my story compared to the prophets peace be upon all of them that you know went through such severe things that were so blessed by god that they were chosen to be prophets how am i gonna relate to them But you will somehow notice yourself relating to them because the emotions that they went through, especially the emotions of sadness and depression, is what made all of us alike in one way. We all went through depression and we all go through some type of sadness. Some people suffer with a lot of bad anxiety. And the thing that I mention a lot about anxiety is that you need to look at anxiety in a rational way perspective before it overtakes you what does anxiety do it makes you worry about something that hasn't happened yet or makes you worry about something that has already happened that you can't change so physically there's nothing you can do in any situation now when you have anxiety and you're worrying like what's going to happen is this going to work out you know i texted this like what's going to happen like i know a lot of people they even have anxiety over text the thing is you having anxiety is not going to change your qadr. You having anxiety is not going to change your fate. So there's really no rational reason for us to develop anxiety and let it grow within us. But one thing that you really need to center in your brain is that if you think that you're going to heal and get fixed without God's help, you're out of your mind. You know, so many people, they go on journeys to find themselves and they find everything except finding themselves because they don't find God. If you don't find God, you can't find yourself. And honestly, it's for a simple reason. Your soul belongs to God. Your entire existence belongs to God. So if you're out here taking yearly trips to Turkey and, you know, flying around, 
saying that I'm going to try to find myself, but you're not trying to find your relationship with God, trying to find the person that has made you, then ultimately, I hate to say this, but you are on a wrong journey because you're on the journey of finding out about this world, not finding out about yourself and finding out about God. And the one thing that I always ask someone is when they're on this journey of quote, quote, finding themselves, I'm like, what are you necessarily finding? I have a whole episode on this. What are you finding? There is nothing for you to find. You create yourself. If you sit there with this mindset that I'm I'm going to go find myself you are out of your mind because there is nothing for you to find you make yourself a lot of us have been told the way that we are how we are the way that we've been raised the way that we should function the things that we should be we've been told our story by someone else and so we live our story according to what someone else has told us and a lot of us don't like the way that we live and don't like our story fun fact you have a you have a chance to change it you do 100 you have a chance to rewrite everything everything because it was told to you by an outsider you have a chance to rewrite everything but a lot of us don't realize that because we take our conditions in our environment and make that us that's not you okay so take that remember that you cannot find yourself you have to make yourself and the way that you start by making yourself is by learning from the one that has made you when you learn from the one that has made you you start to become a lot more cautious about your dislikes and likes you start to grow a personality that is not just worldly but also has a spiritual aspect to it so you need to find god to find yourself or if i should say create yourself you need to because if you don't you're gonna be creating a very worldly person like you know i've talked to some people and the most adventurous things that they've really ever said is oh i want to explore the world i want to fly around like that's it you not ever thought about like wanting to get to heaven or something? I always wonder that. So like you have got to make your goals bigger than just wanting to fly the world and, you know, having six figures. It has to be more than this. And that's where Islam comes in. Because even if you have those things, you're not always going to be happy. So you need to remember God in the scenario. Find God to create yourself, to create the best version of you. If you think that you can do this on your own, you're crazy. Allah literally says, in the Quran, in 940, the importance of relying on God's support. The ayah says, if you do not aid the Prophet, Allah has already aided him when those who disbelieved had driven him out of Makkah as one of the two. When they were in the cave and he said to his companion, do not grieve, indeed Allah is with us. And Allah sent down his tranquility upon him and supported him with angels. You did not see and made the word of those who disbelieved the lowest, while the word of Allah, that is the highest. And Allah is exalted in might and wise. In this ayah, we're literally told that Allah is with us. Don't grieve, Allah is with us. Even through these hard times when he's driven out of Mecca, he's going through all these hard things. Allah is with us. So not all bad conditions are here to destroy you. While you may be doing everything in your power to becoming the best Muslim, to becoming the best individual, it might not always be easy. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but again, I know people that do sunnah fasting, that are waking up for the hajjid, Islaharas, they're doing everything. And they just don't feel 100%. That's okay. It's the small, consistent actions that build up to big things. You need to start off with something small, something very, very, very small that you know you can do. Whether that's reading one ayah a day, one extra rakah, whatever, one thing. And when you continue to do this one thing persistently, it will grow. It's like literally making a plant. It's going to grow. The point here is that there is a middle path to absolutely everything. And one thing that I emphasize all the time is if you cannot do the small things right, you will never be able to do the big things right. So don't sit here and overburden yourself with so much more than you can handle. Because if you're not able to build up slowly and stay consistent, how are you going to be able to handle all of this big amount of projects that you've taken on in seeking knowledge? Every single person that you see that's very, very knowledgeable today, mashallah, alhamdulillah, I can guarantee you majority of their journey started off small, small, small things, adding on, adding on, adding on. That's how it works for everyone. If you think that someone sits there and memorizes a whole juice a day, that's, it's very irrational. It takes someone a long time to get to that portion. They start off with an ayah, they add more, they add more. It takes time. So there's a middle path to everything. And one thing that I really recommend you guys to do is... Take a piece of paper and literally draw a middle path on it. Write down whatever you can do and whatever you can do, do it. And whatever you know you can't do, put it aside, write it down and make this a goal for later. 
It's about building up and it's about making small progress. But the one thing that I want to tell you is the things that you know you can do that you have written down in your middle path. Do these things with the most purest and 100% of your intention. What you need is a real new renewal of intention. You don't need to be doing so many things at once. You need to put your all in one thing that you do and make that one thing your dedication. Grow with it. Put your passion into it. And inshallah, you will see things changing. I don't know if I mentioned this already, but I wanted to add one more lifestyle factor tip because a lot of the tips that I shared were more over what you can do religiously as a path of gaining knowledge and, you know, your layout. One thing that I want to tell you is if you're depressed and you're the type of person that has good friends that are on their deen and they motivate you to come pray, they motivate you to come go out and eat, like they motivate you to do good halal things and you're the type of person that says no because you're too busy being in, bre- in bed because you're depressed and sad and you're just so upset with yourself, you're so upset with religion, you're just upset with everything. Don't be that person. Don't sit here and say no every single time someone invites you out to do something fun. Not only will it help you spiritually if you have good friends, they will motivate you. They'll help you get right back on track and they will help you understand that the way that you feel is validated. It's normal. It's humanly. You're a human. Our prophets, peace be upon all them, went through it. You need to start accepting the way that you feel in order to feel better. And if you continue to live in a cycle of unvalidating your emotions and telling yourself that the way that you feel is absolutely absurd, you're never going to get over it. If you constantly live in a cycle of telling yourself that you're wrong for having an emotion, how are you ever going to come into terms with it? Because if it's wrong, you're never going to want to come into terms with it because we as human beings don't like to associate ourselves with things that are wrong. So this is one thing that you really, really need to focus. Realize that what you feel is okay. And another thing that I want to point out that not just emotional and spiritually will make you feel better scientifically there was a research done recently by inc the person that smokes 15 cigarettes a day has the equivalent amount of mental damage to someone that stays isolated and lonely for a very very long amount of time another research also claimed that people that have a better social life tend to live longer so It's not just me telling you emotionally, throwing the facts at you. I'm also telling you scientifically that if you have good people around you, go out. Have fun. I say this in every episode. What you need sometimes is to go outside, look at nature. And that's honestly one of my favorite ways to renew your intention. You look at everything around you and you're like, subhanAllah, like, you know, God made this. How else could it be here? So it really puts things into perspective because you realize that the God that has created this entire earth has made you. And if he has made you, then he has made all the prophets, peace be upon all them before us. He's made everything, right? So if our prophets felt the way that they felt, why is it wrong for me to feel the way that I feel? And it's not like Allah ever invalidated or unaddressed the way that our beautiful prophets, peace be upon all them, ever felt. He said it straight up, like I mentioned in the verses earlier. He tells them, do not grieve. It's not like Allah saying grief doesn't exist. It's not like he's sitting here acting like isolation, depression, anxiety, stress is not real. It is real. So for our culture to sit here and tell us that the concept of depression and mental illness is all wrong, is it's, it's flawed because if God himself, who made us, is well aware of these attributes within ourselves, Who are we to say something? Us human beings don't even know our entire body completely. You know, we study anatomy, we study different biologies, whatnot, but you only know, again, what humankind was allowed to know. There could be parts of our bodies and things in our bodies that function in ways that we have absolutely no idea about. So again, who are we to speak on that? So it's kind of sad because people who don't deem mental health important are the first ones to speak on it. They're the first ones to run their mouth and tell everyone that you're an idiot for feeling depressed. I just don't understand where the logic in that comes from. To conclude this episode, I want to leave you off with four steps. One, first of all, realize that the way that you feel is normal. When you come into terms with things that may seem wrong on the outside surface, and you actually dig deep and you understand what they are, how they are, and why it's normal, it will become a lot easier for you to accept it. Two, sit down and make a middle path. Write down on a piece of paper, what can you do with ease? What are you capable of doing? Three, the things that you have written down, put your uttermost, most attention and good intentions towards it. Do the best that you can do every single day. Stay consistent. It is the consistent actions that build up and make it work out amazing. Four, realize that the longer you sit here pitying yourself, telling yourself that if I have low iman, I'm depressed, that means I'm a horrible person. If I have high iman and I'm depressed, I'm a horrible person. Realize that your iman, yes, it plays a role in the way that you feel, but if you're truly trying your best, 
remember that God will not punish you if you're truly trying your best. If something comes in your life and it's a hardship and it reminds you of God and it brings you closer to God and you start praying more. And even if it's like the most painful, most suffering experience ever, if it has brought you closer to God, it's a blessing. Becoming close to God is a blessing. And it's a blessing that, alhamdulillah, a lot of us have been able to experience, but some of us have not. You know, when you talk to some people, they always say, Allah is always punishing me. Allah is always putting me through hardship. I'm always depressed. I'm always sad. I'm always getting tested. I never get a blessing. Maybe your blessing is hidden in your hardship. And you are just so caught up on thinking, why me? How come me? Why is it happening now? What did I do to deserve this? That you're so caught up in the problem that you're not noticing that you have an opportunity to turn back and get closer to God. So please keep that in mind the next time you go to a hardship that you have the opportunity to turn back to God, to ask God to help you and to ask for guidance. But Alhamdulillah, I hope that all of you took something good from this and realized that not all punishments are out here to actually punish you. Some are actually here to make you realize that God is here and that we should pay attention to God. So be merciful to yourself, be kind to yourself and be patient with yourself because if you aren't, everything's going to be a lot more harder. I want to finish off on this note that if you're looking to make friends or you are looking to learn more about the deen, I highly recommend you guys to join my Discord. Alhamdulillah, it is girls only. Um, After a lot of talking with you guys and a lot of positive feedback, Alhamdulillah, I asked you guys how you guys felt about classes And starting February, I will be giving mental health transformation classes where you learn how to battle different things through the Quran, Hadiths, and science and self-reflection. There'll be a bunch of worksheets, cute things to do, PowerPoints. We'll be having classes on an online platform, and we will talk about different ways to overcome anxiety, depression, sadness. There'll be a different topic every single month. If you feel like this is a class that you can benefit from, DM me on Instagram. I will send you more information. I hope that God keeps all of you so, so happy. Assalamu alaikum.